But the reality of it is the cross before me, the world behind me. So, so keeping in mind that, that living Jesus' way, uh, it's not saying that you are taking the easy road. You're actually taking the road that the world would advise you against. It's taking a different path than what the world would choose. So now we're singing a song, we're singing, you know, I will call upon the name of the Lord. Yes, I will call upon the name of the Lord. You know, I've decided to follow Jesus' ways. I'm going to follow his ways. And then we sang, strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. Um, I'll never forget, Becky explained it. The first time I heard the explanation of this was at the way, and it was probably, how many years ago would that be now? Ages? At least two. (laughs) About 10 years ago. And she explained that that word, wait upon the Lord, it shows you how impactful a, a good word and time is, is that you remember it 10 years later. That word wait there is not the word I'm going to sit back in a chair and I'm just going to wait. wait on, I'm going to wait on God. I'm going, to, I'm going to wait upon the Lord. He's going to show up and he's going to do It's actually the opposite. That wait is this word where we get the word waiter from. I'm going to serve him. Strength will rise as I serve God. Amen. That's where my strength will rise. So I've, we sang, um, I'm going to call upon the name of the Jesus, uh, of the, the Jesus. <laughs> Sounds like a kid's movie. <laughs> I'm going to call, call upon the name of the Lord, right? Um, I've said I'm going, to, I'm going to, I've decided I'm going to follow his ways. There's a cross before me, but now I'm going to start serving him in ways that would be against the world's ways of doing things. But I'm going to serve him based on his principles. And when I serve him based on his principles, not just serving him, because there's a lot of people that serve God in dead works that actually leads people to dry out in ministry. You know how many pastors and people I've, I know that's been in ministry that are now away from ministry? Because they served out of their own strength, their own ways of doing things. But when we serve God based on his principles and what he's saying, and what's going to happen is your strength will rise in that. Why? Because you're going to give God opportunity to do his thing. When I serve God in my own way and everything that I can control, I'm not giving him any room to do his thing. But when I serve God his ways, I'm giving him room to move. So God wants to move in our lives. He wants to move in every single one of our lives. So, so worship in itself, you know, this is, so just to let you know, when, when I planned the set earlier in this week, I had none of that in mind. That's kind of what God said to me while I was worshiping him. He said to me, you're saying that you're going to call upon my name, uh, right? So that's when I said, okay, if there's anybody here sitting here with unforgiveness, people here that's angry, people that, you know, God's way, I'm going to call upon the name of Jesus because he's the only one that can help me to forgive people who don't deserve to be forgiven. He's the only one that can help me. I've decided I'm going to follow Jesus. So it means that I am going to forgive. I've decided I am going. To, now, I'm not angry at anybody. If some of you are thinking, is he holding something against somebody here? No, I'm not angry. I'm just, this is just kind of what, what I, I felt that God told me to say to you guys regarding this. He wants us to apply his principles no matter how hard or how difficult it is. I'm going to call upon his name. I've decided to follow Jesus. I'm going to serve him. So how am I going to serve him? In the opposite way that I'm reacting right now. You, would, you are reacting right now. Turning a cold shoulder, getting angry, manipulating, controlling, whatever it might be, you're going to do the opposite. You're going to love unconditionally. Okay, so that's just something from this morning's worship. I hope it ministers to somebody. I hope that you, you get something out of it. Um, I really feel it's, it's from God for somebody. So we are busy with a series called Please Explain. Um, Please Explain is, is based on questions that I get from people regarding the Word, regarding our faith and our relationship with God. Um, it's, it is because there are a lot of people that have many different questions. And the reason they have questions is because the church don't answer these questions in general. In general, the church, church has tried to steer away from it because it's complicated and it's difficult. And it might cause people to not come back. Um, or it might cause people to say, well, that church, I don't know if I want to be part of that kind of church, right? Because churches have been labeled. Last week, we spoke about the church, what an incredible influence the church has had on our lives. Without us even being aware of it, the church has influenced us. But, but what we have to understand is that the church in itself, um, 
as, as a body within the church, and it's wrong, it shouldn't be that way, there are groups and, and you know, um, a group that you can associate with or don't want to be associated, and there's been names, These, this group is called that, and that group is called that, and the reality is that is not the way God intended it for the body to be. He didn't want there to be division within the body. I do think there is um, a whole lot of wisdom in understanding that we all eat differently. We all like the meal, the food served in a different way. And I do think there is a whole lot of room to have churches that serves God's word in a way that people can eat it. This morning before the service, um, in our pre-service prayer, God showed me an image. We've got a geese at our house. A, I have a geese. I don't care what you've got. This is my geese we're talking about. You might have a goose. Anyway, so, I, so I've got the, those things. Um, and, um, and while we're busy praying this morning, um, in, in the pre-service prayer, um, God brings this image to me. Um, while somebody, and it's not that I wasn't focusing on what somebody else was praying. <laughs> it's not like I was, oh, I'm counting the rafters. No, um, I'm busy praying. I'm saying, God, you know, what are you saying? What, what, what's, what are you saying to our body? Where you want us to go? You know, praying for God's direction. So he shows me my, my geese, and he's eating. My goose, he's eating. And I don't know if you've ever seen them eat. They've got beaks. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so they've got beaks and they long and, and have you, like it's, I've looked and I've watched them eat and I'm thinking, man, I would be skinny if I had to eat like that thing eats because nothing gets into his mouth because it's so long. He can't really grip anything, right? Have you ever seen that? Have you seen, a, have you seen them eat? Like, uh, so, so we put corn down, crushed corn down and he kind of, it's almost like he's biting air because he, he can't get a grip of it. Um, and I'm trying to think of why on earth am I telling this story now? <laughs> oh, I remember why. God's, God's telling me we all eat differently. We take the food in differently. Right? You're going you're gonna to digest food or you're going to take it in. Now, we've got hands, which is, I'm so thankful for because it would be uncomfortable to eat like that because I love, I love good food. I want to be able to stuff it in my mouth. You know, with the quantities that I desire, um, <laughs> right? I want to be able to do that. So, but that poor, he's got nothing, but, it's, but he's still eating. And we have to understand as churches and within this body and within this leadership and within all bodies, we eat differently. And there must be grace and patience and understanding that even though he might not be taking in a whole lot at a time, he's still getting it in. Right, So you might have somebody in your life that you're going, man, I just wish that they would accelerate their growth in God. God is saying, just be patient. Be patient with them. Be patient with the churches around us. Be patient with, with where your parents might be or your brothers or sisters might. Understand that the church um, has a great goal. Division is not one of the purposes. It should not be there. We should be unified as bodies. We should just come along each other and say, hey, we have some disagreements, but in general, we agree on Christ. Now, this topic that we're talking about, is a, it is a sensitive topic, and we've been going at it at a slow pace because I want us to be able to digest what we're taking in. Um, I don't want to rush anybody. Um, probably about four weeks ago, five weeks ago, we prayed for the baptism of the Holy Spirit for some people in our body who have not been baptized in the Holy Spirit. Now, some of you that might be new to you, you don't know what it means. We explained it really well. You are welcome to go and listen to it. It's the first week of Please Explain. Um, so we, we've explained baptism. Now we are on, once I've been baptized with God's Spirit now living inside of me and I'm empowered, there, there are certain fruit that's supposed to come forth out of my life. There's, there's supposed to be a change. Now, in that week, I've been in services where people have been baptized with the Holy Spirit and they leave there and nothing's changed in their lives because it was an emotional um, trip that they've went on. It was power of suggestion. There was a whole lot of emotionalism in it. Um, and, and I didn't want that at all because for us as a body to be able to take the food that we eat from the Word, you must make a decision. I want to take the things from the Word and apply it to my life. 
you must decide. You, you are sitting today at a dining table, and in front of you, there's going to be a meal. Now, you can be like the, 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 the poor goose, and just um, you can eat a little bit of it at a time if you want to, and that's okay. But I, I want to encourage you to dive into the things of God and grab with both hands and just start eating it. Just start eating the incredible food that he's got for you. It will change and impact your life. So we're talking about the gift of the Spirit. Now, the gifts of the Spirit, we see it the first time. It's mentioned in Romans chapter 1. Paul said the following, I long to see you so that I might impart to you some spiritual gifts. I want to impart to you spiritual gifts to make you strong. That is that you and I may be mutually encouraged by each other's faith. Paul wants to see us. He wants to see you. In the, so he's writing. He's saying, I want to I encourage, I want to impart spiritual gifts to you. So this whole week, I'm busy praying for our congregation for meeting today. Busy praying, God, God, I want to impart spiritual gifts to the people so that we can encourage each other. Now, the only way for you to, to be able to get a, a spiritual gift, it's only through salvation and baptism of the Holy Spirit. You have to understand that those things are key. You can have a natural talent, but not, that's not a spiritual gift. Because a spiritual gift is a supernatural gift. It is a supernatural gift. It is a supernatural word that is spoken at times that impacts your life in such a way that you remember it for years. It's a supernatural prayer that's prayed over your life that, that if anything happens, that's the thing that you go back to because it's supernaturally impacted your life. It's not just a prayer that you can't remember what we prayed this morning. They are supernatural gifts. They are not natural. 1 Corinthians 12. Now Paul's writing again. He says, now about spiritual gifts. Brothers, I do not want you to be ignorant. Can you guys remember what the Greek word is? Ignoranus. I know. Terrible word. But that's the word. I don't want you to ignore gifts. Don't be somebody who walks around with blinds ignoring gifts. Uh, and there are many bodies that ignore them. And that's why the body in general has almost become so powerless. Because we've been ignoring the power. And God doesn't want us to ignore it. So why are we as a body learning about spiritual gifts? The reason is, if you were here this morning, if you come for pre-service prayer, you'll hear why. Because you'll hear from people talking about every single day in their lives how God is impacting and using them to impact other people's lives. The church is not just supposed to be us gathering here on Sunday mornings. Your spiritual gifts are supposed to be used every single day of your life so that we can impact this community and the community's community and beyond that. Spiritual gifts are supposed to be the thing that draws, it's a supernatural power of God that draws people into God's presence, and it's His goodness that's reflected in it. It's His goodness that draws people in, but it's through His supernatural gifts. 1 Corinthians 12, 7, we spoke about the scripture. It says, the manifestations of the Spirit is given to every man to profit all. Phanerosis, manifestations, the, the phanerosis. Now, this word is a, it's a key word for us, and, and it should ease your conscience because it means that which is openly spoken and easily seen. That which is clearly seen. It's openly spoken clearly. There's no secret about what's going on. It's like if, if, if Michael comes up and he's, he's, um, he's, got, uh, uh, he's in crutches and he's struggling to walk, and God says, I'm going to touch him. He's going to get healed. He's going to receive his healing right now. And we all know Michael. We all know that Michael can't walk, right? So when God gives that spiritual gift of healing, which, which is one of the gifts, we pray for Michael. And Michael throws the crutches away. And suddenly he starts walking in comfort and with ease, without pain. What is clearly seen? Healing. It's, there's no mystery. There's no mystery. I wonder what was that? It is, it is a clearly seen thing. So the Holy Spirit's manifestation should be clearly seen. It should be something that is powerful. And I want you to know that we do not have a watered down, weak, limited Holy Spirit. When He moves, he is powerful, and you will know he is moving. Okay, it's very important. It says, given to every man to profit all. Um, 
And, and this is key. The prophet of uh, every man should profit. Uh, it is key because when we listen to what Jesus said to his disciples, says, um, when I go from you, I will send you another comforter. I, I'm going to leave somebody behind for you. And this comforter will do what? He will glorify my name and he will praise me. So the manifestation of the Holy Spirit that is clearly seen for us as believers, when we look onto it, must be clearly seen. What must be clearly seen? Jesus glorified and praised. Okay? So why is healing Jesus glorified? Because Jesus has a resurrected body that has no brokenness in him. That's Jesus glorified. That's Jesus praised. It's not out of our own ability or skill that we can heal Michael. It is God doing it through his spirit. It should be clearly seen. Jesus should be glorified. He should be praised. So the word manifest is phanerosis, that which is clearly seen. So it also says that this manifestation is given to profit all. All of us should profit from it. Now, have you, let me, how many of you have ever been in a service where you've seen the Holy Spirit move? Or it's been said the Holy Spirit's moving and you did not profit from it. You actually went away from there being a skeptic or critical about it or even further away from God than what you were before you entered in. Anybody? Yeah, I have. We have to understand that this, this word to profit all, the manifestation, and let me ask you this, is... Is God confused in what he is saying? No. Is he saying it to confuse us or is he saying it for us to have discernment and wisdom and, and the ability to look at what's happening and determine is this God or not? Number two, A or B? B, right? That's what he wants from us. So this word, this syntheron, this to profit all means that the manifestation of the Spirit is there to profit all. And that profit means to bring together and to give an advantage. So when the Spirit manifests, it's supposed to bring us together and give us an advantage. Now I think in, in, in the past, in, in Pentecostal circles and in charismatic circles, I think some of that, the people might have had sincere Sincere hearts. But I do think there's been a misuse of the word, the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. In such an extent where people have actually moved away because it wasn't him. It, it wasn't him. 1 Corinthians 12, 4. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh in all, all in all. So he's saying there are differences and there are diversities. Now we looked at this two weeks ago and that's kind of where we ended and that's where we're going to pick up today. Differences, diversity. So within the scripture, and this is one of our main scriptures when we look at the gifts of the Spirit. It says, now, now there are diversities of gifts, but it's the same God, the same Spirit. Um, and there are diversities of administrations, and, and there are differences of operations. So there's, there's difference, uh, diversities, difference, diversities. There is gifts, administrations, operations. There is um, Spirit, Lord, and God. So there are things to see within the scripture which should be revealing to us. Now, it becomes revealing when we actually start studying and thinking, well, is God saying something different by using different words? Three things that you should get from this specific scripture. Number one, variety. There's variety of gifts. Number two, there are different categories within gifts. So there's a variety there's different categories, administrations. The word administrations is the categories. So you've got gifts, administrations, and operations. So within that, God is using people within ministry, within different operations. And for an example, fivefold ministry, pastor, apostle, um, prophet, teacher, evangelist. So, so there's different categories within that administration. And then the last one is, it shows us unity. It shows that the Father, the Son, and the Spirit is involved in the gift giving. So, 
to think that you are, you've decided not to use the gifts is almost like, it's not that you're just saying no to the Holy Spirit. You're saying no to the Son and the Father. This is not the Spirit doing this on His own. Well, the Holy Spirit, your job is just this. We're not involved in that at all. No, the Father and the Son is involved. It's, um, I think I might have told the story years back. Um, I remember when I was about three or four years old, we lived on, a, on you would call it an acreage. Um, we call it a plot. And um, my, my mom's dad, uh, my mom was a, a sharpshooter. So she did shooting, and she was really good at it. Um, and she, she actually used guns, different kind of guns, and she used shotguns also. So she, she, when you look at her now, you would, you would think it's not the same person. But way back then, she was the one in the family that if somebody had to come into the house, <laughs> You know, she would, she would use the shotgun. So, so we lived on this, this acreage, and, and um, her, her dad gave us a shotgun because there were a whole lot of snakes on the farm, on this, this little plot acreage. Snakes everywhere. And, and what my dad did was, because my dad was, he was kind of the opposite. My dad was like, just a peacemaker, you know, never raised his voice quiet kind of. So he would take the shotgun and he would put it somewhere and he would take the bullet and he would hide it somewhere completely different just in case one of the kids would grab all of the shotgun and the bullets, right? So, so he would hide it away. I remember specifically, I was busy playing outside. We had a fig tree, um, which was massive. And we were busy picking figs from the tree. And there um, I found a snake. Remember running in to my mom yelling, there's a snake, you know, come and kill it. My dad says, just leave it. My mom says, uh-uh, time to use the gift. <laughs> right? Same way we live in our lives. There are things coming into your life where you can either live, I'm just going to ignore it, or you can say, it's time to use the gifts I've been given by an incredible Father, the Son, and the Spirit. Do not keep that separate. Okay, so don't just use the gift of salvation and say, I've got the shotgun, but I'm not going to use the bullets. Right? Use all of it. He's given it to you. It's a free gift. So there's diversities. There's the, um, so the, the important thing about these different gifts, and this is important for us to understand as the body, is remember there are two words. Iresis is the Greek word that is used for differences, but the word that he used here is diuresis, and diuresis, it's got a little prefix to the iresis. The iresis means different to bring division. In other words, our gifts are so different with the purpose it's supposed to bring division. Iresis was used for schools that were specifically set up for people from different um, um, theological, not theological, actually in, in the Greek time and in Roman times, they had their Aristotle and all their, their philosophers and um, you know, all their wise people in the one section and their schools were opposing to each other. It's almost like a Kung Fu movie, right? Where, uh, you know, dragon style, monkey style, snake style, right? They were all against it. And my style is the right style, yours is wrong. Obviously, none of you watch Kung Fu movies. <laughs> Garnet, it's like a Kung Fu movie. You got it, thank you. Right, so they were completely different, 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 what's Kung Fu? Kung Fu. What? Are you, since when are you Japanese? It's Kung Fu. <laughs> anyway, so there were different styles. Now, this was the same in those days. There were different teachings, and they were opposing each other. If you were of that teaching, I was, I was, there was division. I was against you. I was fighting against you. Now, the word diuresis, when he's saying there are different gifts, diuresis is difference, but to do away with division. That's the difference. Just that little prefix that's put in front of this word. It's got the, the power um, on dissolving division. So gifts are supposed to dissolve division. But it can only dissolve division if, Jesus is clearly seen, glorified, and praised. It cannot dissolve it if he's not there. Because then people will look at it and go, that's just you guys emotionally hyping people up. 
or that's just you with the power of suggestion or whatever it might be. I've been in a service under the power of suggestion where there were, I think some of the people were sincere. Again, I can't judge the people who, who, who's in this, but, but I've seen the following where, where you're at, a, at this, this speaker, this guest speaker where he says, okay, everybody in this aisle, God said all of you are gonna fall under the power of the Holy Spirit when I wave my arm. This whole aisle's gonna fall over. Now you in that aisle, you're going, I'm gonna fall over? <laughs> right? I don't wanna be the only one who's not spiritual. He just said I'm gonna fall over. Right, so what do you do? He waves his arm and you go, okay, I'm just gonna take a seat, right? <laughs> Why? Because it's power of suggestion. That's not the way God works. I've seen people fall over. Honestly, I've seen this and now they're lying on the ground, they're doing this. Is anybody else or is it just me? I want you to know when God moves, they, they cannot but be praising and glorifying of his name. I don't know who your God is, but mine is that powerful. I, I, I just don't know. Okay, so the gift of spirit is supposed to bring us together. Now, this morning, what we can do right now is I want to clarify, first of all, what the gifts of the spirit are not. Can we start there? Because I think it's important for us to know what they are not. Number one, spiritual gifts are not natural talents. Natural talents are, are different from spiritual gifts. Natural talents you get when you are born. It's natural gifts that you are given. Do not um, think that because you are naturally good in something, that you are, that's your spiritual gift. That's a natural ability that you were given. Can God use your natural gift with a spiritual gift? For sure he can. Will God use it most, most of the time within your natural talent? Most of the time you will function. That area that you are passionate about, that area where you are motivated. Remember we used that word, the word for, for operations. Um, you said the gifts, diverse gifts, diverse gifts, diverse gifts, different administrations um, and diverse operations. That word operations is the Greek word um, for energy, but it's not an energy that is fuel. It is an energy that is it is inside of you. It brings you alive. When somebody talks about it, you become passionate about it. It's that, it's that conversation that you start having with people when, that you get passionate about. You, you know what energy I'm talking about? That thing that just moves you. So, so what happens is most of the time your spiritual gift will function in that area that just moves you. It's not something that you can explain. So we, God will use our natural talents. He will use it. I remember Neville, um, when we were in South Africa, um, Neville was, we were still in a tent, gathering in a tent, uh, and it was, we came back from a youth camp. Um, I was one of the youth leaders at that point in time. I'm one of the, the youth pastors there, and um, the youth were back in the hall. It was an evening service. We just finished praise and worship. Neville started with the announcements. I'm in my camping gear still, stinking like smoke, um, uh, in the back of the service and standing in the back of the service during worship, God says to me, Andreas, I want you to go sing a new song. Um, so first thing I do is I honor the man of God who God has placed in authority. I don't start singing the song over his announcements. Right? Uh, God told me to sing a song. I'm going to sing it now. I'm not going to honor your authority. No. I moved to the side of the stage. I stood there and I waited because if God wants me to sing a song, he'll let Neville know. I stood on the side of the stage, Neville saw me. He came over to me, said to me, yes, what is it? I said, God said I have to sing a new song. He came back on stage, he said, everybody, we believe that God moves in different ways. Um, this evening, God wants to move in a way. We are open to his moving. Andreas, please come up. I take the microphone. Now, I did not have a song planned in my mind. I didn't have a tune or a rhythm band. <laughs> it was none of that. It was taking a microphone and I started singing from my heart, which I felt God wanted to say. Three lines in, a man three rows in from the front does a backflip over two rows and starts manifesting, demon manifestation in the service. Now I have to tell you, those moments in my life are rare. It's not that it happens every day, every week, every year, maybe 
you know, it's because we don't, sometimes when you come back from camps, you're super psyched up and excited to do all those things. But, but in that moment, I responded. And because I responded, God used the natural talent for his spiritual gift to bring deliverance. Nobody in that congregation could have doubted what was going on. It was plainly and clearly seen. So don't confuse natural ability, but God wants you to use your natural ability. It's, it's, it's important to understand that. When you are naturally born, you are born with natural abilities, but when you are spiritually born, you are given spiritual gifts. Now, spiritual gifts, the second thing that I want you to know is spiritual gifts are not given to the elite few. It's not that just some of you get spiritual gifts when you are born again. Every single one of you have been given spiritual gifts. Some of us have not received it or discovered it because we were ignorant of it. Like Paul said, I do not want you to ignore it anymore. I don't want you this morning. When you leave here, my desire is that you will have a desire to go to God and say, God, what, what are my gifts that you've given me? And please hear the purpose of spiritual gifts. It's not for, for, for me, man. I've, I've got, you know how many gifts I've got on my shoulder? I'm going to show all of you, right? You know how many gifts I've got? It's not for the purpose of you. It's not so that I can can glorify myself or lift myself up. The purpose of the gifts is to show God's love. If it's used for anything else, it's abused. It is abuse, abuse, abuse. The gifts are to show God's love. It's not to show your spirituality. God's love. God's love, God's love, God's love. So when people look at me ministering in the spirit of the gift, what must they see? God's love for the person. Love, absolute compassion and love. So why should we desire spiritual gift? Because God said, go and love others as I have loved you. Okay, so so that should be our desire. So your spiritual gifts are not for the lead few. Spiritual gifts are not signs of spiritual maturity. Okay. This is an important one. If somebody speaks in tongues, it doesn't mean that he's more spiritually mature than you are. Spiritual gifts are not signs to say, man, you know, I've arrived. Right? Spiritual gifts are, are... A simple, for me, a sign that somebody has said, I no longer want to ignore the spiritual gift that God has given me. Somebody said, I'm not going to live ignorant of them anymore. I want to apply them into my life. Does that make you better or worse? No, it doesn't. It just shows me a different place where you are in your relationship. God loves you unconditionally. Even if you don't receive the spiritual gift, God's love for you is exactly the same. It hasn't changed. He doesn't like the one who's speaking in tongues more than the one who doesn't. But the one who is speaking in tongues, he realizes that he's maybe clued into something. He's picked up a tool that he's given him and he's using it. Paul said, I desire that all of you should speak in tongues. Now, I just want to clarify speaking in tongues. Do you know that speaking in tongues are the least, the least of the gifts? The word says it's the least. Do you know why it's the least? Because speaking in tongues is for your benefit. Every other gift is for the benefit of others. So the one that's for your benefit, God says, it's the least of the gifts. But the gifts that are for other people, those are the ones that's going to show forth love. Okay. Okay. Spiritual gifts are also not the fruit of the Spirit. Do not confuse the gifts of the Spirit with the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is in Galatians 5. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. Those are the fruit. Those are not the gifts. Some people will say, you know, I just don't have the gift of love. Well, no, you don't. <laughs> right? Because it's not a gift. It's a fruit. It is a fruit. Now, how do fruit grow? Fruit grows, what are you feeding? 
If you want to grow in the fruit of the Spirit, feed it the right food. That's why it says we have to renew our minds, change the way we think. Because within that, love, joy, peace, and all those things grow. That's the environment for the fruit to grow, is God's Word. So if the fruit aren't growing, it means that you currently have the wrong soil. Change what you put in so you can change what comes out. But the fruit are not the gifts. From the fruit should come a desire for the gifts. Why? Because gifts are to show forth how much God loves other people. Okay. Number five, spiritual gifts are not something to fear. It's not something that you have to be scared of. There's something, and it's been odd and creepy sometimes in the church. It seemed a bit strange at times in the church. It should not be. Um, I believe that's man taking something, and it, again, out of sincerity. I think there's a whole lot of sincerity. I don't doubt their hearts. It is to show forth God. I don't think they're trying to, to, to do anything but show God's love, um, most of them. But we have seen people take something out of complete the way it's supposed to be. So it might seem strange, but know that, that, that it's not something that you have to fear. It might seem strange to you, and let me explain this. It might seem strange to you the way God would do things. Like I said a few weeks ago, that when Jesus spit in the ground, that wasn't normal prayer practice. right? That wasn't the normal prayer practice. You blind? Okay, let me just put my hands on you. Is it okay if I touch your eyes? Sure. Yeah, can I put my hands on you? Okay. Lord, I pray for his vision, right? That's normal prayer practice. So, so it was a bit strange to see Jesus clear his throat, spit in the ground, make mud, rub it in the guy's eyes, and tell him to go wash it off. But uh, Jesus, he said he can't see. You haven't put your hands on his eyes yet and played, prayed in a normal church way for him. It was a bit strange, but what was the result? It was plainly and clearly seen that God just healed somebody. If something strange happens, um, I honestly believe that it, we have to see clearly God just did something. I cannot find a scripture on example. Jesus Remember we said we are disciples. What are disciples? Learners. What is a learner? We are a follower of Jesus. Now, the Bible is there for us to show who to follow and how to follow. I cannot find examples of, of where it was different. Now, I know you're saying, but we don't, we're not Jesus. I, I get that we're not Jesus, but the word says the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead is now alive and working in you. And greater things will you do than him who you see ascending into the clouds. Greater things will we do. We've got the spirit inside of us. Now, now I want you to understand that, that greater has got multiple meanings for it. It's got a greater number of things, more in amount. But also, I believe that we will see miracles when we start functioning under God's spirit and his leading. I believe we will see great miracles happen. So what are some of the, what are some of the spiritual gifts? Uh, this is important to know because some people don't know what spiritual gifts are. So I saw some confusing faces when I just said the fruit is not the gifts. And I said love, joy, peace. And some people, I thought that's the gifts. That's not the gifts. That's the fruit. Here are the gifts. The gifts is in His grace, God has given us, us believers, different gifts for doing certain things well. That's Him saying it. I love this. In His grace, in His grace, undeserved, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. He says, first of all, if God has given you the ability to prophesy, speak out with as much faith as God has given you. So first gift, the ability to prophesy. What does prophesy mean? Prophesy means speaking on behalf of God. When we look in the word and scriptures, whenever the prophets prophesy, they were speaking on behalf of God. It's God's words that he wants to communicate to people, and he's using people to communicate it. A few weeks ago when, when we prayed for Josh, Ermery prophesied over Josh. We had people afterwards, Mark's prayer was a prophetic prayer over Josh. 
Um, we had people afterwards giving him a prophetic word. And what's, what's very important for us to understand is that if you are speaking on behalf of God, you have to understand that there's certain characteristics of God that cannot be removed from the prophecy. Where we are now in our lives, it's important to understand that we have been saved, healed, and delivered. Okay, so when God speaks to us, it's no longer words of judgment because Christ has already been judged on the cross. So a prophetic word over you should not be a word of judgment. It should not be a word of condemnation. It should be a word of encouragement, upliftment, and leading towards life. That's an important word to understand. Okay, so prophecy is, it's, it's, there's a whole lot in it. We're not getting, we're going to get into all of it right now. Um, the next one, and I want you to understand that the second gift is not less than the first gift. It's not like this is a, well, the first one is the big gift. The second one is like, you know, you were second in line and, well, this is all I have left. Right? <laughs> this is a great gift. Uh, if your gift is serving others, serve them well. That's a gift of the Spirit. That for me is a glorious gift. We've got people that serve us in this body in ways that we can't explain. You know, I'm just looking over you guys. There's, there's many of you that are, have the gift of service that is incredible. And I can see it's not from a heart of being acknowledged. It's because that is your gifting. You are actually bringing forth God's love in what you are doing. Right, and, and again, I say, if I just look over here, there's so many of you doing it. I can acknowledge you all, but there's too many of you doing it. That's a gift of service. It is so vital for the body to have. Number, number three, if you are a teacher, teach well. Which means prepare well. Study well. Teach well. If you, uh, next one. If your gift is encourage others, encouragement, Encourage others. Be encouraging. God has given some of you the spiritual gift of encouragement. Be an encourager of the body. Have you ever had somebody say to you, well, you did great. And you go, yeah, thank you. But then another person comes next to you and they say, man, you were amazing. And the way they encourage you, it almost feels like God is speaking into your life. That's a gift of encouragement. Some people have the gift of taking people who's in a hole and speaking just three words to them that his wife has said to him for four months, and it's never changed or impacted him, but three words from this person, and it's exactly the same three words, there's a gift that has been given to that person to get people out of holes. Some of you have the gift of encouragement. Are you using it? Because do you understand the body needs it? This body needs it. The people in this body needs it. Use your gift. Next one. If your gift is giving, give generously. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> you, know, you know what? I actually, I just did the test this morning again. Um, I'll show you. There, there's a link if you want to go. There's, they ask you questions, and it helps you to assess kind of what your, your gifting is. I know my, we, we have a, a gift of giving. It's one of the spiritual gifts that God has given us. We love to give. I love to give. I pray that God will give me more so I can give more. Because I love to give. If your gift is giving, how many of you have that, that when you go and buy something for somebody, it is like, man, you can't wait just to give it away. That's a gift. Some of you hate buying gifts. I can see you. <laughs> Right? That might not be your gift. But there's a gift in giving. Give well. God needs givers in the body. And it's not just talking about giving on Sunday mornings. It's talking about in the week. You know what you're going to do? Is you're going to, yeah, you've planned. God wants you to give. So, so a meal to somebody. So you don't go to, to um, Costco and just buy a lasagna. You actually go home because you care about the giving. You make it, and you dress it up, and you make it awesome, and then you deliver it. And, and that giving of that gift, it brings joy. Because you know what's going to happen at the other end? People are going to feel loved because you responded. Okay. Next one. 
If God has given you leadership ability, take the responsibility seriously. Many of you have the gift of leading and you're not leading anything in his body. I know it says church, but it shouldn't say church because I'm not talking about this. I'm talking about leading anything in his body. Leading at your work, leading at the ball field, leading at your playground duties, leading this. We are supposed to be leaders as if you've been given that gift, pick up that gift that you've been given and lead people. I'm not talking about walking around with a Bible, Bible bashing people, but lead people with encouragement and with life lessons and with your words that you use and with the language that you use. Lead them with, with how you, you project yourself and speak into situations and how you look at things. Lead people because people want leaders. And to be a godly leader, it is not easy, but it's a call that's upon you. Be that. Don't shun away from it. Don't think, well, I'm not in ministry anymore, so I don't have to lead anymore. That's nonsense. Lead wherever you are. Okay. If you have the gift to show kindness, do it gladly. This is a gift of mercy. So so here's the whole thing. This is Romans 12 verse 6. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. That, that's, sorry, that little part there, add on there, is very important to understand. Some of our faith is inaccurate. We have to get our faith based on who God is. It is, a, it is so vital for the body to have the right understanding of who we believe in, who He is. Prophesy in accordance with knowing you have a good God. Okay, Um, if it's serving, then serve. If it's teaching, then teach. If it's to encourage, then give encouragement. If it's giving, then give generously. If it's to lead, do it diligently. If it's to show mercy, do it cheerfully. Show mercy, do it cheerfully. 1 Corinthians 12, 7, this is our, our scripture again. The manifestations of the Spirit is given to every man to profit all. The phanerosis of the Spirit is given to every man to synth thereon all. The phanerosis, the clearly seen, it's visible, there's no doubt, of the Spirit is given to every single one of us to profit, to bring together, and to give an advantage to all who comes in contact with it. Spiritual gift, it's good. 1 Corinthians 12, 4. Now there are diversities of gifts, same spirit, differences in administration, same Lord, diversities of operations. Within this body, there's differences, there's diversities. It should not divide us. It should bring us together. Here's a second list, and I'm, I'm almost done, of spiritual gifts. 1 Corinthians 12, 7. A spiritual gift is given to each of us so we can help each other. There it is in plain language. I don't have to use Greek. To one person, the Spirit gives the ability to give wise advice. To one one person, the Spirit gives the gift to give wise advice. Wise advice, wisdom in advance, wisdom and counsel. When people sit down, God gives the gift of wisdom. Counselors should function with the gift of wisdom. We should function with it. To To another The Spirit gives a message of special knowledge. Those are tools. That's why when somebody asks me, you know, uh, know, we're going for counseling or we're going to psychiatrists, psychologists, but my my first response is, is always, are they Christian? Because if they are Christian, there's a chance that they are functioning within spiritual gifts. And if they are functioning within spiritual gifts, there's a greater chance of you getting healing and being restored the right way than they would be if they are not. Now, am I saying psychologists and, 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 and um, um, worldly counselors can help you? They can probably help you. They, they could in the world's ways and terms if you want to stay on that side. But if you want the supernatural to take place in your, in your life, you have to go to somebody who functions with the supernatural, spiritual gifts. We've had counseling sessions where we sat down with people, where I've sat down with somebody in front of me in a counseling session, and God gives me a special word of knowledge for that person that I knew nothing about. 
that he'll be speaking and, and all I can hear he, while he's talking uh, is, is God saying to me, ask him about the other woman he's seeing. Telling me about everything he's doing and how he's doing this. And he doesn't understand, you know, why the relationship. And, and I said, oh, sorry, I just, I have to ask this. Because you're nervous when you ask that. <laughs> right? It's, 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 I said, sorry, sorry, I have to ask this. God says he wants you to tell me about the other woman you're seeing. And I'm not talking about detail. Like what does she look like? He wants you to repent from it. And they went quiet and kind of looked around in the room and started crying. It's a word of knowledge that's given by the Spirit. Now, do I just say that to everybody? <laughs> no. <laughs> right? You don't. Some guys are big. <laughs> but God's special knowledge and situations, it's not to embarrass. It's not to bring down. It's not to destroy. It's actually with the purpose. God wants to show his love. He gives special knowledge to bring breakthrough. Okay. The same gifts... The same Spirit gives great faith to another. This is another gift. Great faith. Not to everybody, but to some. And to someone else, the one Spirit gives the gift of healing. Great faith to another. Now, I want you to understand all these gifts. It's like we have to covet the great gifts. I want, we have to go after the great gifts. Now, it's not saying, man, I'm really, okay, I've got these three. I'm going after those four now. No, it's, it is asking God for His gift the greatest gift in the moment that he wants to use you. Now, sometimes it's going to be based on your natural ability and God's going to use you to speak. Like, like being able to speak and be able to sing and be able to perform at something. It's natural abilities that God has given me. But within these abilities, he's using the supernatural gifts to bring across his love for people. It's something that he's using. But there are times where I can tell you I am not somebody who feels like I am a healing evangelist. Like, I just want to go pray for everybody who's sick. It is not my passion. It is not my desire. It is not my, my energy. The thing that motivates me in the morning when I get up. Right? This is what I'm going to do. But when God brings somebody across my path that needs healing, I pray. And I say, God, your spirit's the one that brings the power. Your spirit's the one that moves. So within this moment, you bring the healing. And God has moved me in places and times where I've seen healing, where people have recovered and where they have been healed. But I've also seen where I've just generally prayed and nothing's happened. I'm not saying that, that we shouldn't just pray. We, we have to pray also. But, but I want you to understand that there are great gifts. Now, gifts of faith. Sometimes I functioned with the gift of faith and I stand back and I go, wow. You know, years later, I'm going, wow, yes, man, you had great faith there, right? Kind of, yeah, 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 very good. Uh, you know? No, sometimes you look and you see, find yourself in moments where there's been great faith. And when you remove yourself from the situation, you look back and you go, wow, God was present there. Because if it was just me now, I would not be able to stand like the way I stood in, those, in that situation. Sometimes a gift of faith will come. Uh, an incredible testimony. I'm waiting for it to, to publish it. Um, we will send it out. We have somebody in our church whose son died. He died. She was busy resuscitating him for 23 minutes. When the fire um, department showed up, um, the fire chief was one of the people who were actually there asked her to be removed from the room. She stepped out of the room. Um, she, he was, there was no vital signs, no breath, no heartbeat, none. She stepped out of the room and she said, I stood next door and I, in faith I stood and said, enemy, you will not steal my son tonight. She started interceding for him. She said, the fire chief opened up the door and said to her, 
Don't know what just happened. Your son's breathing. Does she go around from hospital bed to hospital bed praying for everybody? It was a gift of faith for the moment. Now that's somebody in our church. God's working in this body with spiritual gifts. It's, I can't wait for her to share it. There's reasons why she can't right now, but soon she will. Um, so how do I discover my gift? How do you discover your gift? Number one, follow the way of love. Number one, follow the way of love and eagerly desire spiritual gifts. How do I discover my gift? First of all, I have to follow the way of love. God loves me so much that I received his grace unconditionally. Now I'm gonna follow his way of love. Jesus walked in the supernatural. Did he not? Is there anybody here that can say to me, Jesus did not walk in the supernatural? He did. He fed 5,000 people with a few pieces of fish and a few loaves of bread. He walked on water supernatural. He calmed a storm. He healed a dead person. He, he raised Lazarus. He healed a blind man. He healed people of leprosy. He healed deaf ears to hear. He healed the lame, um, the dumb, the mute, the, the demon possessed, the oppressed, the ones that are changed up, chained up hurting themselves. He set the women caught in adultery free with a word of wisdom, a word of knowledge and insight. Word of, so in adultery, word of wisdom comes, word of knowledge comes, impacts her. Bah! Do you think she hasn't been confronted with adultery before that moment? Of course she has. But in that moment of a supernatural spiritual gift flowing and functioning, in that moment it hit her, it changed and impacted her life that she turns around and converts a whole city. A whole city gets converted to following Jesus Christ with one word of knowledge. Bah! On the nose. Jesus walked in the supernatural. So, follow the way of love. Who is love? Who's our example of love? Christ. Lay down his life to love others. Because he loves us. So, if I'm going to follow the way of love, it means I'm going to follow Jesus' ways, which means there are going to be times when I'm going to humble myself and with love approach somebody with a word. Or humble myself and with time serving. Right? I'm a CEO. You know, I can't serve. But with love, we have people here in positions of authority that come and washes the floors. That don't need to do that. But that that gift that they're flowing is impacting people. We are supposed to, so so we're gonna follow the way of love and then. You have to eagerly desire it. Not just casually pursue it. Eagerly desire. God, I eagerly desire your gifts. You have to study what the Bible says about gifts. We've done a little bit of a study now, so hopefully you're a little bit ahead. Ask God to show you your gift. You can definitely do that. God, show me what is my gift. And if you don't know what it is, there are a lot of people in this body, as you get to know this body, where people will start pointing out the gifting that is in you. We have certain people that are gifted in praying. Is a gifted man in prayer. Powerful. Right, you, you've got people in this place that are gifted. If you, like there's some people that when they pray, you fall asleep. There's not a chance you're gonna fall asleep when he prays for you. No way. They are gifted, they are gifted people. Now, I, I, I want just some wisdom. Your desire might be to be gifted in singing, but if your natural talent does not fit your desire, have the love of Christ to not do it for everybody else's sake. Can we, 
Like if you want a drum, can don't, please don't do it. Right? <laughs> so make sure that your natural talent and your gifting, there has to be an alignment. You're scared. You can't talk in front of people. But, but now I want to start teaching on Sunday mornings. No, ask God to show you within your natural time. Are there times when God will call you out of your seat even though you are fearful of speaking in front of people? God will call you out and you're going to give a word that is so powerful where you're going to sit back afterwards and go, that was, everybody knows that was not me. Right? We're going to see that. Okay, ask God to show you what your gift is. Examine what you enjoy and do well. Have a look at what you enjoy doing it and what you do well. Your spiritual gift will flow and function within your natural abilities also. And the last one, um, there's a spiritual test which I encourage you to take. Uh, it's spiritual gift test. I know it's complicated. Uh, Spiritualgifttest.com. You want to go and take it. It just asks you questions, and it's uh, rated from one to five. Go and answer those questions, and and like I said, I did it this morning, and for me, it's very accurate. It, it, it's very accurate. So, most importantly, do what the Holy Spirit leads you to do. You might be gifted in one area and, and flow in it, constantly flow in it, but if you get into a situation where God wants something else to happen, you don't go, well, God, that's not my gift. But God's saying, but you're the only one there. Will you allow me to work through you? Whatever you want to do, Lord. Holy Spirit, you use me in whatever way and whenever you want to use me. Amen. Amen. That's spiritual gifts. Uh, 1 Peter 4 is last scripture. God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. This is such a great scripture. I don't know how you can doubt spiritual gifts when you read this. God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. Do you have the gift of speaking? Then speak as though God himself was speaking through you. Do you have the gift of helping others? Do it with all the strength and energy that God supplies. Then everything that you do will bring glory to God through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Plain and clear. Next week, we're going to please explain purpose. Um, and I, I think it's going to be helpful for everybody. So I hope to see you guys next week. Let's pray. Um, Father God, we want to thank you that you speak clearly and plainly in your word. And Father, you want us to believe your word. And I want to declare this morning that we believe your word to be true. And we receive your gifts. Your gifts are not there to separate us from civilization but it's actually there to bring people closer to you, to show them your love. Father, we want to repent from speaking negatively against it. We want to change the way we think about spiritual gifts. We say we want to open up our hearts to them and ask for you to move and work and flow through us. Holy Spirit, work through us. Now this morning, if there's anybody here um, that says, uh, you know, you want to say, God, I want to receive your spiritual gifts. And maybe you've never said this before. Maybe you just want to say it again. If you want to say, Father, I want to receive your spiritual gifts. All I want you to do is just stand up where you are. And we're just going to pray a prayer together. If you say that I want to open up my life to receiving God's spiritual gifts. Awesome. Great. Okay, we are just open up your hands. Um, and I thank you, God, that you're not complicated. You look at our hearts. And Father, the hearts of the people standing up now are saying they want to receive the spiritual gifts that you have for them. Father, I pray that you will reveal to them the spiritual gifts that you've given them that are theirs already. Also pray, Father, for opportunities for them to use and flow in those spiritual gifts, for the Holy Spirit to be plainly and clearly seen. 
glorifying and praising Jesus Christ in what they are doing. That there will be no doubt that it's you working through them. Father, I pray for the people here that has the gift of discernment, that discernment will come forth. I pray for the people here that have the gift of prophecy, words of wisdom, words of knowledge. I pray for those words to start flowing out of their mouths. That they will eagerly pursue love first, Father, and whatever they speak, it will be accordance with who you are. I pray for those who have the gift of healing. Father, I pray for healing hands to be anointed this morning, that they will start touching people and healing will start flowing forth from them because you are working through them. Father, I pray for people here this morning that have the gift of serving, that service will be done in such a way when people look at what they've done, they see you glorified and what they are doing. I pray for people with the gift of giving. I pray, Father, that you will re release your resources from heaven to them, that you will open up the tap, the faucet will flow, and your gifts will just start pouring out of them because you are providing for every one of their needs, and they want to provide for those around them. I pray, Father, that you will release that gift to them. Father, I pray for, for, the, for the gift of of just mercy, Father, loving others. I pray that that gift will be in every single one of us, Father. But for those whom you are stirring that gift within, give them that pa passion, that, that thing that they can't control anymore, but that they want to start serving and loving people who need to, to, to receive your mercy. I pray that that gift, that heart, that passion, that love will start flowing in every single one of them. Father, I pray for your teachings the teachers that are here, that have the ability to take your words and communicate it to other people in a way where something that seems complicated suddenly becomes simple for that gift to flow. I pray for your leaders to be raised up in this body, not just to lead here on Sundays, but to lead every day where they live, where they work, where they do sport, where their activities are for the leadership of Christ to come forth out of them and they lead people in the right direction. I pray, Father, for your anointing for every single person who's standing right now. And those who are sitting and not standing, Father, I pray that you will bless them anyway. For those that's already flowing your gifts, Father, I pray for more. I pray for a greater manifestation of the power of your spirit than what we've ever seen. I pray that your manifestation will be so clear that it's Jesus Christ working that people cannot doubt, that it will not bring division, that it will bring people closer to you, and that the whole body will profit from it. I pray for the people in this body that's flowing under your gifting for a greater release of their gift. I pray for a unity, Father. I pray for a submission to your leadership, that we won't use our gifts outside of you, but we'll use them under your authority and we'll stay within it, Father, because that's how you function and work. I pray, it, Father, and I thank, I'm thankful that you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are joint in this. There's unity in this. So we want to align with what you are saying. In the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen, everybody. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful Sunday.